I've been playing a lot over summer and I've changed some key clubs out of my bag and I want to tell you about those today. Hi, I'm Paul and this is The Golf Show. Now I'm not looking for sympathy, but when you test as many clubs as I do, it's really difficult keeping the same 14 clubs in the bag for the course of a season. And I've made three key changes to my bag. So I want to tell you about those today. I have got a bit of a reputation here at Fulford as having a different putter for every round, but you're gonna to have to watch till the end to see if I've swapped the putter out. Okay, so let's start off with the driver. There you go, this is the PXG Gen 5 driver. This has just gone in the bag over the last week or so. I've been playing the Gen 4 for about a year, year and a half. You can see me getting fitted for the Gen 4 in this episode of the Golf Show. Um, I love the Gen 4, it was the best driver ever had. It had this KBS upgraded shaft in it. But recently PXG did a deal where they were selling the Gen 5 driver for £250. So I had a chat with Lawrence Pauly who fitted me and said would that work with my shaft, would it be a benefit for me upgrading from the Gen 4 and we decided it would. So I bought one of those for 250 quid. I put the Gen 5 head on my old shaft and I put the Gen 4 head on the new shaft which is a hazard of smoke and that's gone on eBay. So that's really good. So I'm going to get a new driver head for maybe £100. The technology in this is fantastic and it is a really good looking club at address. I've got this set at 10 and a half degrees and Lawrence has set the weights up there to, to counter my slice a little bit. Comes with a really nice head cover, as PXG do, boxing glove style, a bit of camo. New innovation on the back as well. That little magnet in there will just mean it just sticks to the side of a, of a golf cart when you play any shots, so you're not losing your head cover. So that's a new club for me, the Gen 5 10.5 degree driver. No changes in the three wood or the five wood. The three wood head cover was made by Rose and Fire in California. Might lose a few subscribers for that one. Sorry, my dad bought me the wrong bag when I was five. What can I say? These are both the PXG Gen 2 fairways. They've got the Evenflow Project X blue shaft in there. Had these a couple of years now, really nice. I was struggling with them a little bit and I was pushing everything and Lawrence Pauly at PXG took the shaft out and turned it through 180 degrees and it's got a taper on the end of the, end of the shaft so you can make it a bit more upright or a bit flatter, so we turned it round and it's been brilliant. I can get about 240 out of one of these on a good day. So these are definitely staying in the bag. When I did my last watts in the bag, I realized that my driving iron and my hybrid were going the same distance and they're only going a little bit shorter than the five wood. And by having both of them, it meant I could only go up to a 56 degree wedge. I couldn't get any more wedges in. So I've thought about that and I have put in a PXG seven wood. Again, same quality, Gen 5 cover with the cart system magnet. Beautiful looking club. Nice small head. So I've put the 7 wood in and I've taken the hybrid and driving iron out, which has given me room for one more wedge. So I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. This has got the Mitsubishi 10 size 75 gram stiff shaft in it. This should go about 210 yards. And if you watch the next episode of the Golf Show next week, you're going to see me test this against my hybrid and driving iron. Great looking club, never had a seven wood before, so easy to hit, really enjoying this club. My irons go from five iron to pitching wedge and they are the PXG Gen 3s, the 0311T. Now I've had these about two years. I did try some new irons out when I was down with PXG when Zach had his fitting recently, as you can see in this episode here. And these are still giving me great numbers. They've got the Acra 90 composite shaft, this shaft has been brilliant. Before I got these, I was really struggling with tennis elbow. This composite shaft just takes all the vibrations out. My elbow has been absolutely fine. On all my clubs, I've got the Golf Pride mid-size plus four grip. I just find that makes it nice and easy to get a nice neutral grip for the size of my hands. So my irons haven't changed. That's the five iron right through to pitching wedge. I was fitted for some new wedges by PXG in this episode of the Golf Show. Gosh, I'm pushing some old back catalogue today. I hope you're going to watch those though, guys. And these have revolutionised my chipping. I am so confident with this. This is my gap wedge. It's the BP grind. It's a 50 degree, which has been bent to 49 just to get the right gapping. That's something you've got to do in your, 
when you have a fitting, make sure you're getting the right gap, especially at this end of the bag. This is the Sugar Daddy 2. It's got the full face grooves. Beautiful looking club. The Elevate Tour wedge shaft. This has got a vinyl cord that runs all the way through. It's again to take out some vibrations. Really like this club. This club's going to go 105 yards. As I just said, I had a problem with my bags. My hybrid and my driving iron were going the same distance. So now I've taken those out and put the seven wood in, it's meant I can stick an extra wedge in. So I've gone for a 56 and a 60 degree Sugar Daddy 2. Now this is in the C grind, which is a different sole, and I'll show you that in a moment. The idea for the C grind is it's a bit easier to, to open up and manipulate around the greens. Again, full face grooves, beautifully milled forge clubs, weights in the wedges there. So the 60 is the new addition, the 56 I was fitted for in that episode of the golf show I was just telling you about a minute ago. So this is the 50 degree on the left, this is the BP grind, this is the 56 which is the C grind. You can see on this the slightly sort of more rounded sole which is going to help you just open that club up a little bit more so you can manipulate shots you know from about 40 yards in and from around the green. Now I did say I'd made three changes in the bag. Obviously I can't count, I made four. It's lucky when I had the business, Rachel did the invoices. There is a new putter. Yes, I've lived up to my reputation, but first, have a look at this cover. How beautiful is that? Nice magnet fix there. Excellent quality from PXG, really like that. And the new putter is the ping. The Tyne 4. Similar shape to a Odyssey 7 perhaps. Really like this insert. So I've been toying with putters, yes I know, all throughout the year. I did have the Ping Tyne C, which was very similar but centre shafted. Really liked that at first, but then it just didn't quite work for me. I found I was struggling to take it back online, so the Scotty Cameron Phantom 11 X.5 went back in. Then we went on a holiday and we played golf in Barbados, and I filmed it. What a surprise. And you can watch that in this episode here. But in the rental set we got there, there were some Ping G425s all through the bag, and one of these in. And I thought it was okay, and we were filming as we were going round, which is obviously a bit distracting as well. And then when I came to edit it, I was holding putt after putt after putt, and I didn't really realise. Guy had one in the pro shop here at Fulford, lent me it to try it out, and I love it. This insert's fantastic, comes off the face really nice, really consistently, so this has gone in the bag. Nice slightly larger grip there from Ping. Not quite as fat as the Super Stroke, but I like that. You've got the nice sleek black shaft. I think that is a good looking putter. Who knows? Might even stay in the bag till Christmas. <laughs> okay, so that's the equipment in my bag. Let's have a quick look at how I set the bag up. So the bag is the PXG Fairway Camo. Great looking bag. Comes with a double strap and a single strap. It's got a four-way top and carbon fibre legs. This fits on the trolley, although it is a little bit short. Sometimes it depends on the trolley, you might have to put a towel underneath it. So obviously at the top end, I've got the driver, three wood and my putter. Obviously I'm going to use those quite a lot. Then coming in, you've got the five wood, the seven wood and my five iron. Six to eight, and then in the bottom, nine pitching wedge, gap, sand and 60 degree lob wedge. Really happy with this setup now. I did know for a while that the hybrid and the driving iron compromised me a little bit. It might have been because the driving iron was nice and new and it's all black. We'll have a look at my driving iron and hybrid in a moment. But I'm really happy with this setup now. So my trusty hybrids come out of the bag. Well, I'm going to keep it, so let's have a look at that. So this is the PXG Gen 2, 22 degree. So it's equivalent of a four iron. Very nice quality head cover again. All the PXG head covers just ooze quality. Had this for about two years. Again, got the weighting system in there, which really helps out. Got the Future Cure Pro Hybrid shaft in there, that's one inch longer than normal. PXG bring out driving irons every couple of years. This is the Gen 4, this is the X, it's 18 degrees, but my word, what a good looking golf club. The Extreme Dark finish there, the Mitsubishi 80 gram stiff shaft, and the black grip. Beautiful looking club. I've had some success with this but it can also be a bit of a slice machine. So I am going to keep it. This could be really handy when we go to St Andrews. As I say, the seven was going to go the highest. 
then the hybrid, then this. They should all go about 210. Watch next week's episode, and we're going to um, test the three of them out head to head. But at the moment, this is out of the bag. Next time we go play some Lynx courses, this may well be going in instead of the seven wood. What other goodies have I got in the bag? Well, I use a Bushnell. I keep that in the water bottle pocket there. It keeps it secure, it's never fallen out. That's the V4, there are some more models now, but this does the job. I've also got the Tag Hewer watch as well. Again, I reviewed that in a previous episode. Gosh, I'm getting them all out there today. The watch is pretty good on the GPS. The battery life's got better. I don't use it to track shots. It's just too, too much effort. I've got to press too many buttons there. But if you're blindsided, that's great. That does happen quite a bit. Otherwise, the Bushnell is my choice. Pocket full of wooden tees. I hate plastic. I hate plastic on the golf course. I'm always picking up broken tees. Golfers, if you are going to use a plastic tee, pick them up when they snap and put them in the bin, please. Birds and animals are eating them. I've got another change as well. A few months ago, I tested out the Wilson Triad golf ball. If you remember, this is the ball that's designed to help you break 80. Well, I really like those. It's got a nice soft feel. I did try the raw version, which hasn't got the white coating on, and it looked like some old ball from the 80s, and it got dirty after about two shots. It was horrible. But the Triad ball was really, really nice. However, I was in St Andrews. I needed to buy some more golf balls. Make of that what you will. And they didn't have any Wilsons in. So, ages ago, I was fitted by Titleist for the AVX, and I've gone back to it. I don't know why I changed. I think I got a bit you know interested in the in the promises Wilson were making so I've now got the AVX back in the bag. Titleist fitted me for these. Great spin, optimum distance before that I was playing the Pro V1X. I've even playing some of the yellow ones as well. If it's a, an early morning or getting a bit dark on a night I just find with my nearly 50 year old eyes these are a bit easier to see. But I'm now back on the AVX. I've always got a couple of gloves in there. I play the Callaway Tour Authentic Glove. I've tested lots and lots of gloves on the Golf Show and the Callaway by far are the most resilient and stay cleanest the longest, so I really like those. The scorecard holder was made for me by Mark and the guys at Hazard Golf. This has lasted really well. Scorecard in the top, then room for a course planner or something in the bottom. Fits nicely in the back pocket. Also got a water bottle in the bag. Got to have some liquids with you. But whilst it's been sort of towards the end of summer, I've started carrying around some of these. These are sleeves. So if I'm playing in shirt sleeves, it's not cold enough for a jumper, just gets a bit chilly on an evening, they just go on there. I used to wear these when I was a cyclist a long time ago. You can get some designer ones from golf, or you can get some cheap ones from some cycle suppliers. These are a good idea just to keep in the bag, just gets a bit chilly, just go under your sleeve, down to your cuff. Waterproof jacket, even in the summer this didn't leave the bag. I wear Galvin Green waterproofs. Hopefully we won't be needing that today. And the bag comes with a matching rain hood. I'm not a huge fan of white towels on golf bags, they get dirty really quickly. So this is the PXG Microfiber Aloha pattern. Pretty cool. I always carry a couple of alignment sticks with me. Got a lovely alignment stick cover there made by the guys at Hazard Golf. I'll put a link to them. Local Yorkshire firm. Quality of their head covers, card holders, accessories is excellent. I think it's worth having one of these because sometimes you can lose these little rubber stoppers on them or maybe yours has got a pointy end for sticking in the ground. I have seen people scratch the heads of their drivers and their fairways by putting them in on top of these. It's not just a, a vanity thing. I quite like the, the white alignment sticks. Nicer when you're practicing, get you all lined up. I also carry one of these. These are the goodie bags that visitors get at Fulford Golf Club when they pay a full green fee. Put my phone in there when I'm playing, but when I'm out on the course, I've got my Scotty Cameron pitch marker, excellent that, and my ball marker. So a print of Zach's hands when he was very little, his name on the back. I mark it that way, then if I need to move my putt for a playing partner, I mark it that way to remind myself that I've done that. I also carry a few spare pitch markers as well, a nice cool one there from G4. As I say, I keep the Bushnell in this little drinks pocket. It's elasticated, it's easy to get it in and out. It saves having a, a Bushnell little bag on the side of the bag so the drinks has to go in there on your trolley. Final couple of things. Got a little first aid kit in there. Bit of everything in there just in case you need it. Got my driver adjustment tool. Not that I'm going to go tweaking with it, but just handy in case anything comes loose. Probably don't really need to carry that around. I have got some resistance bands for warming up these old bones before the first tee. And last but not least, I've got my tripod and selfie stick, because this is YouTube, right? 
Guys, I really hope you enjoyed that what's in the bag. It was interesting to make some changes throughout the course of this year. I'm really happy with the setup of the bag now. Hope you liked that episode. If you did, give us a like, and we'll see you next time on The Golf Show. I hope you enjoyed the episode of The Golf Show. To watch another, click here. To subscribe, click here.